Hi everyone and a warm welcome to QuantPy. In the first video of this Slice and Dice series, we will derive the Black-Scholes PDE using the famous delta hedging arguments. There are a few variations on the approach, which we will regroup under two main arguments, the first of which uses a more modern approach to showcase the self-financing assumption, the second of which uses the original Black-Scholes arguments. After going through the first argument, the second argument will seem a tad sloppy in comparison. Anywho, under each argument, we will explore two approaches for deriving the PDE. This is just to cover all the bases because different people would have been introduced to the PDE from different starting points. And our main goal is to demonstrate that the PDE is relatable and that all approaches boil down to the same assumptions. This is the PDE. It looks quite awe-inspiring, but we will gradually come to view it as quite intuitive once we unpack the steps. Let's dive right in by quickly recalling the black shell settings. The price on the stock is assumed to follow the geometric Brownian motion process with some constant mu and some constant sigma. The interest rate is assumed to be constant, so the differential of the bank account is easier. No stochastic term. The option price? is a function of five factors, price of the stock, time to maturity, sigma, R, and the strike price. However, if the last three parameters are set to constant, then we can write the option price as a function of a stock price and maturity only. We could also represent it with a subscript T, because it is a stochastic process, but we are after the intuition here, so let's drop the subscript for this video. The value of this option will change with the time and the underlying stock movements. We know from Ito's lemma that the differential of the function of a stochastic process is equal to the derivative of the function times the differential plus half the second derivative times the quadratic term. And as v is also a function of time, we need to add the differential with respect to t as well. By the way, we have derived Ito's lemma in another video, so do watch that video if you feel like brushing up on this topic. We substitute the differential of s, and we know that ds squared is equal to the square of the coefficient of the diffusion term times dt. We combine the dt terms, and on our left with a recognisable SDE, which has a drift term and a stochastic term. The stochastic term exposes us to the Brownian motion which is the same one driving the price of the stock. Now, the Black-Scholes magic lies in using a delta hedging strategy to eliminate the stochastic component. Among ourselves, it means hedging the risk of the option by trading in the underlying stock. As both are driven by the same Brownian, we eliminate, or shall we say, almost eliminate our exposure to the Brownian in the option by trading the underlying. This is all fine and dandy, but how many units of the underlying to buy or sell, and when to buy or sell, or until when should we keep the position hedged? Well, this is a tricky part that we tackle now. Assume we are hedging a short position in a call option, so our strategy will involve buying stocks. Buying stocks will of course mean funding considerations, so we assume we have unlimited access to a bank account debt, which we of course want to be able to repay, plus we also need to pay the bank interest rate when we borrow, and conversely, the bank will pay us the interest rate when we have excess cash. Now let's say we bought delta units of the stock, delta here is just the number of the units of the stock, and borrowed alpha units of the bank account, where delta and alpha can be negative or positive. Now, as we saw with the option price, the value of this portfolio will change as the stock price moves or time changes. Let's substitute the differential of the stock and the bank account. We can again combine the DT terms and we have the familiar SDE of our portfolio. Now, our total portfolio consists of an option, delta units of the stock and alpha units of the bank account. And our aim is to choose delta so that the coefficient of the stochastic term becomes zero. Isolating sigma to the left hand side and cancelling the sigma s term, we find that the delta is equal to the derivative of the option price with respect to the stock price. 
If we substitute with this in our combined portfolio, the stochastic term becomes zero, and we are left with some nice drift terms to combine. Terms cancel, and we are left with a far simpler expression. We can substitute for delta in the value of our portfolio of stock and bank account, and let's put it up there for future reference. Now, the total portfolio has only a deterministic term, and hence it must grow at a risk free rate to avoid arbitrage. We substitute for pi, equate the right hand side, cancel the B terms, and we get the Black Scholes PDE. The PDE looks complicated, but it has a very simple and intuitive interpretation. If you shift the last two terms to the right hand side, then you can see the right hand side represents the return on the bank account. And what does that bank account balance consist of? Well, it is equal to the option premium minus the amount we borrowed to finance the purchase of the delta units of the stock. That return or expense in an infinitesimal period is equal to the balance times the interest rate. The left hand side is essentially representing how the value of the delta hedged option changes in an infinitesimal period. The first term captures the impact of the shortening maturity, and the second term the gamma impact, which is the risk that remains after the delta is hedged. And if you're tuning in from the physics world, then it is just a backward parabolic PDE with source term equals to R times V, and the convection term equals to R times S times the delta. And if you are tuning in from the probability world, then it is more or less the backward diffusion equation. Some textbooks would explain the approach that we just outlined by constructing a replicating portfolio. Let's quickly go through this variation. We illustrated the delta hedging by constructing a riskless portfolio through a combination of an option, stock and bond. And the gain loss of the portfolio was then given by this differential. And we then determined the delta hedging strategy by setting the coefficient of the stochastic term to zero. The alternative approach would replicate the option by a portfolio of stock and bank account and construct a portfolio of stock and bank account that replicates the value of the option and its gain process. The rest is then familiar. We would substitute Ito's lemma for the differential of V and then the dynamics of the stock and then of the bank account and then equate the coefficient of the stochastic term. So both approaches are pretty straightforward. The only complicated step was calculating the gain of the portfolio of stock and bank account. Remember, we said the gain of the portfolio can be written as follows. If we were to apply Ito's lemma in its base form, then we would be applying the product rule to each term on the right-hand side, meaning we obtain five terms, three from the differential of the stock term and two from the differential of the bank account. But the gain processes assume that the delta and the alpha are deterministic. This simplification boils down to the self-financing portfolio. So the change in the value of the portfolio is down to the change in the prices of the two assets only. In the classic Black Shoals, this step does sound sloppy, but the end result comes out correctly for reasons that we will see when we analyse the pricing from a more modern perspective. For now, to help appreciate this self-financing strategy, the easier way is to analyze this in discrete settings. Let's analyze one step in the discrete process. Let's say we are at i minus one, one step before the ith time. We decide how many units of the stock and the units of the bank account to hold in order to hedge our position. Now time moves to step i and the prices are revealed. We can determine the value of our portfolio. Now as the prices have moved, the delta would have shifted, and we need to rebalance the portfolio quickly before the time moves to the next step. We want the portfolio to be self-financing, so we will not be injecting any new money. So the self-financing portfolio means the value of our portfolio, after the rebalancing, must be equal to its current. Essentially, we have just redistributed our wealth between the stock and the bank account, without injecting or taking any money out of the portfolio. Now, time marches on to the next step, i plus 1. And again, the prices are revealed. And we get to know the value of our portfolio. So you can see that the 
portfolio value is changing because of the changes in the market prices. And we are able to hold the position fixed for a short period. Let's calculate the change in the value of our portfolio in one generic step. The value at each step is just the number of the units times the price. From the self-financing assumption, we can substitute the rebalanced units at the ith step. Now, we can arrange by combining the delta and the alpha terms. And the continuous time version of this is essentially the equation at the top right. And we can now understand how the gain process works. Now, let's quickly outline the Blackshaw's original argument. No doubt, it looks a bit strange by current standards, but Blackshaw's actually contracted their hedge as one unit of the stock with one over delta unit of the option. So, we are long one unit of the stock and we are dynamically hedging it by buying or selling options. We can easily calculate the gain. Notice again, the one over delta is assumed to be locally constant which is equivalent to the hardest part in the previous section that we had to explain with a self-financing strategy. Now, as before, the familiar territory. We know the SDE of S. We also know the differential of V, which is given by Ito's lemma. We plug the two differentials into the portfolio and we get... Now we combine the terms, we set delta equal to the derivative of the option price with respect to S, and we are left with only a deterministic term. And as this portfolio is deterministic, it must grow at the risk-free rate. We substitute for pi, and now we equate the right-hand sides of the two differentials. We shift the delta to the right-hand side. Now we get rid of the brackets on the right-hand side, and then just substitute the delta to get the black Scholes PDE. Bam! The textbooks these days will outline this hedging strategy as one unit of the option with delta units of the stock. So that's another variation on the approach, which is again very familiar. So in comparison with the black Scholes approach, the portfolio looks like this. And the gain process is also very familiar. All four variations boil down to the same thing. So just pick the one that makes the most sense to you, but do pick a side of the argument and stick to your guns.